Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we are continuing our series about solar. I know it's such a complicated subject and people just really uh, feel overwhelmed by it. I want to try and make things really simple and go through things quickly, but get them out there in a way you'll understand. Uh, and, and hopefully not overwhelm you with too many details too fast. And today we're going to talk about charge controllers. That's all we're going to talk about. Uh, first, in talking about charge controllers, you have to decide, do you want to buy a kit and just buy the controller that comes with it, whatever it is, or do you want to assemble your own kit and buy the best controller that you can? Personally, I think buying a kit is just fine. Yes, you can assemble a, a more productive and maybe, well, maybe cheaper, maybe not. You might pay more because you're buying better stuff. Uh, but a kit will work super fine and just buy whatever comes with a kit. Uh, and you won't regret that. But you should have a basic understanding of what's going on in, in charge controllers so that when you set it up, you'll know what's going on. One of the most important things you're going to have to decide is what size of a charge controller you want. They will usually come in 10 and 20, although occasionally you'll see a 15 uh, amp. 10 amp, 15 amp, 20 amp, 30 amp, 40 amp, 60 amp and there will be some oddball sizes in there but usually that's one of those sizes is what you're going to be buying and if you buy a single panel, a 100 watt panel, you buy a kit it will probably come with a 10, maybe a 15 amp controller because the, a, a single 100 watt panel is putting about 6 amps, a little less than 6 amps, 5.5, 6 amps and you want a cushion, you don't want to buy a 5 amp controller with a 5.5 amp panel a 10 amp controller for a single 100 watt panel. If you have two panels that you're combining to have 200 watts or you buy a 200 watt panel then you will buy a 20 amp controller and if you buy three panels 300 watts what will you buy? You will buy a 30 amp controller. You'll have a little cushion uh, and it'll work really well. If you buy 400 watts 40 amps you will buy a 40 amp controller. Uh, where it gets awkward is if you buy 500 because I don't there, there are a few 50 amp controllers most of them jump to 60 and so you might end up with a 60 amp controller so the ba first thing is the basic sizing in the amps and you just relate that one to one to the panel you buy a 100 watt panel you buy a 10 amp controller really simple it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that that's all you need to understand now the one thing you do want to think about is if you're going to grow if you buy a second, you say, well, and I've done this. My first panel, my first panel was 55 watts because they were so expensive. I think I paid over $300 for a 55 watt panel. And that was all I could afford by the time. And I bought a 20 amp controller because I knew 55 watts wasn't enough. I was going to add a second panel. And if I had bought a 10 amp controller, I, I couldn't have added a second panel. 150 watts would have been too much. So the one time you want to buy too much controller is if you think you might grow into it. Prices on controllers are just all over the place. I mean, you can buy a $15 10 amp controller. And it, who knows, maybe it'll last you forever. Uh, ch cheap Chinese 10 amp controller, sometimes those things will surprise you and be amazing quality. So you could try that. Uh, and if it breaks, throw it away. It's $15. What have you done? What have you lost if it breaks and you throw it away? Give it a try. A better way to go, to my mind, is to buy a little better panel, a little better controller that you think will really last and that someone will honor a warranty. You buy a cheap Chinese controller, it breaks in a year. No one's going to fix that thing. You throw it away. Nearly all American-made controllers, and there's a whole lot of them, are more expensive, but they almost always come with a five-year warranty. And you might want to think, you're buying a better controller, you're buying a company that will stand behind the controller, uh, you're buying more features in that controller, it may be worth the extra money. So you just size the controller for the job and then you have to think about do you want to spend the money for more features and we'll talk about the features in just a minute. Okay so now one of the most difficult concepts we're going to try and convey today is which should I buy PWM, Pulse Wave Modulation, or MPPT, Multi-Point Power Tracking. Uh, universally, 
it's understood that MPPT is better. You will get more power into the battery. So it's better, but it's usually quite a bit more expensive. There is a train of thought that says, no, don't even bother spending all that extra money. Instead, buy an extra 100 watt panel. If you buy two, if you spend, if you're going to spend $300 on a controller, why don't you just, and it's, uh, it's 200 more than a PWM, take that $200 and buy another panel. And, you know, I can't argue with that, with that thinking. Uh, maybe it would be better to buy three 100 watt panels and a, and a cheap 30 amp controller. And maybe that's the best way to go. I can't tell you it is not. Um, personally, I advise people to buy the MPPT controller because what you're going to get, if it's a $300 controller, and actually the controller I recommend for most people is a $300 controller, you will get so many extra features. You get an American-made product with a five-year warranty and a company that will stand behind it. So to my mind, it's one of those times when paying the extra money is worth it. Maybe it isn't to you. But, so let me explain why the difference between uh, PWM and MPPT. So the question is, should I buy a PWM or an MPPT controller? And the way it works is that a PWM cannot handle high voltage panels. They are limited usually to 18, 19, 20 volts. There are some exceptions, but those are unusual. If you want to buy a, a, a high voltage house panel, with it, then you have to buy an MPPT. But even if you buy a low voltage panel, there is still an advantage to MPPT. PWM, all it does, it has only has one job in the whole world, to reduce the voltage that comes out of the solar panel and goes into the battery so it does not damage the battery. So what it does, the PWM, you say your battery will only take 13 volts right now. Your, so here's your solar panel putting out 18 volts. Remember we said they all put out a minimum of 18 volts. So it takes 18 volts into the charge controller. The charge controller burns off five volts of that. It burns it up as heat. It just turns it into heat and dissipates it into the universe. And then it puts the 13 volts into your battery. Where did that five volts go? It's just gone. So your battery, your panel is producing 18 volts at 100 watts and you're only putting in uh, 13 volts at probably 80 watts. That five volts and 20 watts was lost as heat and destroyed, gone forever. It is a dumb controller. Now an MPPT is just the opposite. It tracks the battery and knows exactly what the battery will, will take. So it knows it will only take uh, 13 volts right now. So it takes the 18 volts or 24 volts or 36 volts or 100 volts, steps it down to 13 volts and puts it in the battery, exactly like the PWM. But then it does something magical that the, and scientific of course, but it's kind of magical, uh, that the PWM cannot do. It increases the amps. So if it cuts the voltage by 20% or 40%, it increases the amperage. If it drops the voltage by 30%, it increases the amps by 30%. Every little tiny bit of power that the panel is making goes into the battery. And with the PWM, it does not. The bigger the array, the more important it is. Um, and so, in my mind, it's always worth paying more to get MPPT. So I, I mentioned before features, that one of the things you'll buy with a more expensive controller is our features. Well, so what? You know, you know, there's a feature race going on in every product in America and they give you all these features and most of them are really worthless. In the case of solar controllers, charge controllers, the features they give you will make your battery last a lot longer. The life of your battery, how long it lives and how happily it lives, is determined entirely by how you treat it. And how you treat it is one, nearly is mostly controlled by how your charge controller treats your battery. So if you the things that are in your control are don't discharge it too much and make sure if you have a wet cell battery that you keep electrolyte in it. Uh, but if you have an AGM and you never discharge it too much, you keep it up at 12 2 and above at all times, that battery should last you a long time. You spend the money on a Lifeline or a Trojan or a DECA, you buy a good battery. A good battery should, a uh, deep cycle battery, golf cart battery, 12 volt 
high quality battery, should last you 10 years. But if you treat it badly, and I've known people who did this, bought a Lifeline, spent like three or $400 on a Lifeline battery, and then killed it in a year. The way you treat your batteries is very important and costs you or saves you a lot of money. And what you get out of features on a charge controller is a much longer life. So if you spend $300 on a battery, and you can really easily spend $300 on a Lifeline, it will last you 10 years. If you treat it badly, it'll last you a year. So to spend another $100 or $200 on a controller that will triple or quadruple the life of your battery, to my mind, is money well spent. So what are the features you would be looking for out of, out of a charge controller that you want to buy, you want to get, and that will give you long life on your batteries? The first one you want is a uh, temperature gauge. Well, it won't be a gauge, but it will be an attachment that goes to your battery and it will tell you the temperature. A uh, cold battery wants less voltage. It doesn't want high voltage. A hot battery can take more voltage. And so the, the battery, the, the charge controller knows the battery and has the intelligence inside it to give it just the right amount of temperature, of voltage for that temperature. The better the controller, the better the logarithms, the better the software, the better the science that goes into it. And then they give it a long warranty. The most important thing you're getting with your battery is information about the status of the battery. I'm looking for a, a, a display panel on the controller. That's my first choice. My second choice is a plug-in that will um, tell me, give me a display of what's going on on the battery. Because if I know what's going on in the battery, the better I can treat it, the longer it will last. The more control you have over the charge controller, different batteries want to be treated different ways. So some batteries, I know this is going to be really counterintuitive to you, some batteries want to be charged at 14.8 volts. Well, no cheap controller will ever put 14.8 volts into a, control, into a battery. But if it lets you control it, you can tell it to put in 14.8 volts. That's called absorption. That panel, that period of time when it can take 14.8 volts, and your battery wants 14.8 volts. Uh, the big thing is with AGMs, because AGMs like high voltage, and that means you can charge it faster. So if you only have two good hours of sun in a day, it will take everything that will come out of that panel and it will it'll gobble it up. It will take it all in. But if you have a lead acid that won't, then it will only just take in a little bit, little bitty bits at a time. And you've only got two or three hours of good sun in the winter and the storm's coming and you're not getting much in, are you? But a battery that's hungry and a charge controller that will just shove that power in there, in that two or three hours, it'll just scoop in all the power and maybe you'll get to 100% charge that day. And a, a cheap charge controller will get it to 60% that day. That's why the battery lives longer. Now you never want to drop it below 50%. That's your job. That's not the controller's job. So you keep that battery above 50%. You charge it to 100% nearly every day, and that battery will last you 10 years. A $300 battery will pay for itself because you only pay $30 a year for 10 years, and you've got your money's worth. But only a controller that will shove that power in there on the short, rainy days will, will keep that battery healthy and happy, and that's where it's going to pay for itself. So Trojan and Lifeline are two batteries, and Optima is another one. Uh, those batteries all want high voltages. And if your controller will only put in 14.1 or 14.2, it may never get to 100%. In the winter, it probably never will get to 100%. And a battery that doesn't go to ever go to 100% is dying. And so it will pay for itself, more than pay for itself, in the life of your batteries. And so to my mind, cheap controllers are, are penny wise dollar foolish. So there you go, all kinds of information and, and a little overwhelming and I know it is, but there it is. And I hopefully you can, you can go back and study this and, and try and break it down and, and get some of it. And we'll cover a lot of this. We're gonna cover batteries in the next Frequently Asked Question, the next fact. Uh, until next time, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.